we can do. Uh, Fozzie, do something to entertain the people until the show starts. Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's free stream chatter uh, was me doing the sort of thing they do before the Muppet show, but in a really weird voice that had sounds nothing like Kermit. And then I switched over to being Fozzie Bear, but also nothing in the exact same voice that didn't sound anything like Kermit's voice. I'm paranoid, so I'm going to do a brief audio test here. Still pretty soft, but but we can hear it. Okay, so let's take a look at today's. We actually have a plan for today. We, we won't follow it, but we have it. Uh, we did do the brief audio test, and we'll do that every time. Now, I know a lot of people have been playing with uh, COVID data, uh, COVID-19 data, and trying to make all sorts of predictions to the point where it's almost guaranteed one person somewhere is going to end up making just by chance, a very accurate, uh, uh, a very accurate uh, prediction of the coronavirus just by chance, not because they know what they're doing. Um, one, let's see, um, one thought that I had, which is not a great thought, because it's sort of like back testing, but it is not the same thing as back testing. And that is, uh, whatever method you use to create your model today, you know, however you parameterize your model, however you do your goodness of fit or change the parameters of your model to make it fit best, pretend you don't have the last five days worth of data. Pretend it's five days ago and you were doing the exact same thing but without the data that you have now. Uh, and then, you know, use the same methodology but you'll get different parameters, presumably, uh, unless, unless you're very accurate. You'll get different parameters because you have less data, different data and less data. Uh, and then what you could do is you could look to see that the, um, you know, what that that older model would have predicted if you had if you had uh, announced it on that day, and what the uh, what it would look like in five days, and then you know see if what whether your the model that you would have created then is reasonably accurate going out five days, and I don't think that's a good way of showing your model is accurate because there's a lot of things you could cheat a lot on doing that. You can your uh, previous model does have some of the same data as your new model, obviously. Uh, so that's not a good way of testing that your model is good, but it is a pretty good way of testing that your model is bad. Uh, because if your model, the methodology you used to create the model, uh, would have failed five days ago, uh, there's no reason to believe that it's correct today. Of course, it could be correct by chance or whatever, but that sort of shows you that your whole concept, the whole idea of how your modeling is inaccurate. Um, and another thought I had that I think I'll throw out here uh, is x squared, which is a polynomial. Um, when they do population analysis, there is a there is a formula that says population grows. This is this is a known uh, this is a known formula. The easy formula is the more people they are, the more they will reproduce and produce new people. Um, however, uh, that do, the population rate hasn't kept growing exponentially, and uh, one way to model that, not the only one is to say that any time two or more people meet, there's a slight but non-zero chance one or more of them will die. In other words, the more encounters you have, the more uh, likely it is that, the more likely it is someone's gonna die. Um, so you can model that. Now, of course, it's really x times x minus one over two if you wanna model the number of times x people could meet with each other. But, and that's only two people, so you could add three people or whatever. But it is, it is, it is gonna be proportional pretty much to x squared if we ignore the, uh, the unimportant uh, x term. So the idea here is maybe with the coronavirus, we could do the same thing. We could maybe see if an x squared term in terms of people meeting other people, that's a more reasonable term than just saying each person infects n people. Um, you know, it's, it's more a question of how many people meet with each other. Uh, so that's just a thought. Um, that's not necessarily something I'm going to be uh, pursuing. That's just a thought for someone out there or no one out there. Now, I know this stream is pretty annoying, uh, mostly because of content, and despite what some people say, I know my voice is pretty bad. Um, but, but is it annoying enough, is the question. And I thought if I were to do some funny voices uh, during the stream, like, you know, every stream would be like a themed, a different voice, I could make the stream even more annoying for other people. Now, that's always good. Hurting other people is always good. But I also kind of wondered, and this is a very random thought, um, you know, talking out my, my solution methods does seem to help me a little bit, although I'm, I'm, not necessarily, I'm not necessarily sure it's that great. In fact, sometimes when I get really lost in thought, um, you'll see that I get silent. 
but building up to that somehow seems to help uh, some, seems to help me uh, get to where I need to be. Although the Pomodoro method, which by the way we're going to ignore this time because it's the first time, um, might be helping more. I don't know. Uh, it might be that this just motivates me to to work because, and it's not really work; it's fun. Um, because I'm talking on a stream, and I feel that this time I'm sort of putting aside for work. Uh, but it's theoretically possible, and not really possible, uh, that if I did it a different voice consistently, it might ma be more effective for me. Somehow, like doing a um, doing an announcer voice. We are looking today at uh, the uh, coronavirus. No, I know what you're thinking. Coronavirus, terrible thing. Exponential growth. What is it? We're going to take a look. Doesn't seem to help me any right now, but you know, a different voice might, uh, and who knows what kind of voice that would be. Um, okay, there's also some stuff we want to clean up from the doing file, which I keep creating. I don't think this is going to do what I. It does do what I want. Whoa. Okay, so I was trying to keep track of where I demonstrated that Twitch OSM leaflet uh, is uh, is where I how to do fetch one step at a time. Uh, one thought I had that we're probably not going to do um, is. We could look at the maps of other planets high resolution and zoom in on them. I think Google already does that and draw stuff on top of them. You could even in theory play a game on another planet, uh, but there's really not a lot of information we have on other planets. We have elevation maybe, uh, we have color, we can, we can compute day and night, that sort of thing. Uh, for gas giants, we don't, so it's not really that you could have a lot of you know, different resources on different tiles of planets. So now the other one thing I need to do is I need to remove uh, Maggie from Etsy host, although I don't think I ever added it. Oh, that's bad. Um, yeah, I did comment that out. I decided that was not a good idea. Sao Paulo we can keep. So let's go ahead and bring up doing here if we still have it. Nope. And doing is just a list of sort of a to-do list, but not, not really called something else. Um, I wanted to get the XGrav program. I'm not even sure that's. Um, I'm not even sure what that is. So we'll, we'll ignore that item. We don't have to do all. We, we're not can't do all of them. Um, see if comets eclipse. Now, I might have done this by mistake because I get the feeling that. Uh, let's take a look here real quick, though. Halley is of course the, the big comet. Uh, one oh 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 blah 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 thirty six. So, and I think if we go over to where the wonderful location I'm keeping it, which is totally inconsistent with everything, um, which I don't remember either, that's good, um, where I'm keeping the list of occultations, not there. Oh, I think it is 312 for some reason. I don't, yeah. Um, I get the feeling we've already done this, actually, for, uh, for comets. Oops, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, actually, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing, so let's do that again. Let's maybe, uh, also the very short memory, that's probably something I need to work on. Okay, so let's see if we've done Halley, and if not, why not? And it might just be because we don't, ooh, shininess. Have we done anything like this? No, what about this? Ooh. Okay, so we've done one comet, which I, I don't know what it is. Now, of course, keep in mind, these comets are really far away right now. Um, Halley's not going to return for quite some time. Um, uh, so this is Comet 67P, uh, funny name I can't pronounce, dash other funny name I can't pronounce. Um, so the question, of, so the problem might be that these comets don't actually appear in, uh, in Spice. We don't have, we don't have a BSP files for them. And therefore we can't compute their positions and therefore we can't compute whether they're occulting anything. Um, uh, all, no, is it BC all, have I gotten really, no, somewhere I have a, a like, known NAFIDs, let's go over there, and, uh, see if we have, clearly we had one of them, um, BC NAFIDs known to spice, um, da, 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 da. okay, and this is what I would call the comet section, I think those are the three, those are three comets, and the rest are not available. Um, those are three mystery objects that no one knows anything about. Uh, that was a sighting spring comet. 
And I think the 2001s are uh, asteroids. I think they're not comets. Yeah. Okay, so the one question we have is, do we have good data for comets? And number two, because a lot of comets just come around once and then go away and come back bajillions of years later, do we care? Uh, because they might not, I mean, in theory, they could still occult stars by getting between us and the star, but maybe it's just really, uh, really difficult or something. Uh, maybe it's just not worth, okay. Okay. Um... Hypothetical comet. Okay, that's fun. Uh, let's see, comet. Okay, so the word comet's not here. Let's see what this is. Uh, comet and asteroid missions. Th now, satellites we could track. I just don't want to because they bore me. Um, some comets. Ooh, shit, 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 go back. Go back. Some comets and asteroids. Planetary, so this is maybe they're just honestly telling us there really isn't. Oh, hang on. Um, so this tells you how to actually um, download, create and download BSP files. I'm not quite that insane that I want to do that. Um, but let's look at the ones they already have up and listed. Um, these are missions. These are not the same thing as the act. These are us flying out to, to the comets and stuff. Um, not the actual comets. So let's see. There's somewhere. Oh, here we are. Oh God. Sliding spring. I don't know what the hell sliding spring is. Is it a comet? We don't know. Uh, okay, so NAFE kernels generic. I think, unfortunately, that was comets. So, not a lot of stuff here. We have, I'm pretty sure we're using this, and this actually looks like it's a specific number. Um, so, yeah, some, that's a, that's not many comments. Uh, let's see, if I, I, I get the feeling we're not going to see a lot of comment data. So let's go ahead and put a note in here. We never give up on anything, but... Um, um, the very few comets Spice has, I've already done. Um, they don't appear to have more. Okay, this is actually an interesting question here, is how close do a star and planet have to be before they look like the same thing? Uh, it's like a double star, how close can we resolve it? We're not going to do anything with that today. Um, now this, um... According to this, this should return an occultation that's in this uh, file that I've linked, and it doesn't. Um, partly because I have no idea what the hell... What the hell am I doing? Um, I guess I need to do a... I could have sworn I fixed this so it doesn't do this anymore, but apparently I've got to do a uh, sort minus R or something. Sort minus N, rather, on the um, occulter uh, array number... Unix time separation in degrees, magnitude, okay. Uh, so that would be one, two, three, five. Um, so, so this is the, the, the idea that maybe I'm missing some occultations. One theoretical possibility here is, that is pretty damn close, uh, that I'm not compensating for um, stellar motion the uh, proper motion of the stars. I'm kind of curious as to when that is. Okay. Um, but also, we're going to ignore that. Okay. Sorry, let's go back over here. There's a few things I wanted to clean up, but not every. Not we're, There's no way we're going to get through everything. Um, okay, be sure to copy Maggie files. Okay, god damn it. Because at a point I was actually using Maggie on uh, BC Info 3, I don't care anymore. Port note command. Okay, there's a lot of mistakes on uh, NASA's Jupiter pages that I probably should put together and send them an email about, but no. Uh, this is other stuff we could release, I could release to the public. Uh, this is a point that this file that I have is inaccurate. Uh, there are two compasses in the sky. Uh, there are two 
but anyway, um, boy, this is boring. Um, there's really no good way to fix the time on this machine because every time you freeze it, the clock stops. Um, yeah, that was that was fairly pointless. I think the only thing I wanted to do was just a very couple of very minor things that we've done now. So screw that. Okay. Um, there was a bunch of questions I started answering, never finished answering, uh, and this is asking whether or not we should go back and answer them. And the answer is, I don't care. Um, but this is important, unfortunately. Now over here, in BC Terminator, um, I use a function called edTerm, which is fine, sorry, that's, that's the one that's okay. Reclat C, to, con con to convert Cartesian coordinates uh, into uh, what they call um, sphere spherical coordinates, because that's what they are. Um, but it turns out this only works if the target object is a perfect sphere, uh, which is a good approximation, but the real big problem here is uh, we're using ED term C, which does assume it's an ellipsoid. So we kind of, you know, go with extra accuracy here, and then we sort of throw away kind of the extra accuracy here. As it turns out, there is a function that does this correctly, um, and it is called something term. So, no, it's not. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, planetocentric. Lo okay, so planetocentric. Ooh, that could be useful. Planetographic coordinates. And here, rectangular to planetographic coordinates. Uh, so let's take a look at this. I think I actually was looking at it yesterday, so it might be up here somewhere. But this actually converts rectangular coordinates. Let's see what the letter talks about here. Um, planetographic latitude. This is basically um, magic. Uh, this is basically because we um, does this act? yeah this gives us this gives us a more accurate longitude and latitude because uh, the planets are ellipsoids. I think there's even a mention of the reference spheroid here. Because we'd love, yeah, there we are, of the reference spheroid. Um, um, which I'm pretty sure is just the equatorial of the reference spheroid for Mars. Oh dear. Um, this could lead to a very bad chain of badness. Um, oh, is that a, was that a PDF? Okay. Um, I hope this is not a PDF. Okay. Okay, da 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 da. Let's look for the word reference. This might not be the, um, or spheroid. Ooh. It's an ablate spheroid, okay. So now I'm uh, worried about something else totally different, which is uh, that um, I'm not sure that the reference spheroid diameter is the same as Mars's actual diameter. Uh, plus the fact that in order to use this function, it is pretty ugly, actually. Um, let's see if we can close up some windows we don't need. Shiny but not needed. Boy, I do a lot of crap. Okay, here we go. Okay. So the inputs we need for this are the body, which, because that's that's how it gets the, knows the, the frame and stuff. The rectangular coordinates we're trying to convert. The reference, okay, so this is where it gets a little bit ugly. The actorial radius of the reference spheroid and the flattening coefficient. The flattening coefficient you can get by looking at the, uh, it's, uh, you can compute it from the three radii of the ellipsoid. Um, and what this returns is presumably lat, long lat, and alt. And if we're doing this correctly, alt will always be zero because we are, uh, we are going to be uh, looking at the, um, the surface of the planet. Um, so th if, this, if, that, if the ed term is returning correct values, these should all be, these should all be zero. The altitude should all be zero. So it turns out this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Because um, I can't just put in, I can't just substitute this. Uh, we do need other inputs. And the other inputs, I think, though, we were actually okay with that. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, so we do get a name here. We do get a frame here, which isn't necessarily helpful, but but okay. And then, and then we could, in theory, get the radii. And okay, so let me let me explain the problem I'm having with this, which maybe is a. It's a totally unrelated and different problem. So stand by for one second while I, uh, which I should have actually uh, co cut and pasted this yesterday, but of course, I'm an idiot. And yes, you may quote me on that. Um, okay. All right. So I actually was doing. I was playing with X Planet yesterday, and hopefully none of this stuff is uh, is sensitive. Okay. Please stand by. Okay. It's over here. Close it up like this. Okay. Um. And reload. So we can look at Mars uh, through X Planet at a given well at right now. So if you do that, uh, you can see that the uh, the if this is this is latitude zero zero. So. You can see that the Terminator is at a pretty, it's not quite at negative 180, but it's at negative 170, blah. So, if we run BC Terminator, uh, minus with the 499, uh, minus time, which is now, which is, you know, I'm going to be obnoxious, and I could just do this. And then, let's say 100 points, although that really is not going to matter. Okay. So here we're going to say at the, uh, let, let's look at latitude zero-ish. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, let's look where the latitude is approximately zero. So that goes up, comes back down. At about zero, it says the longitude should be negative 67. That is clearly not correct. Uh, if you look over here, negative 67, there is not a terminator here. Um, so so there's something wrong with my, with my model. Um, Another way to see this is, well, you can actually do, you can actually do quite a few th cool things with this. Um, now this one is going to be too big for our purposes, so let's make it 600 by 400, and we don't need we don't really care about the glare, or 1600 by 400. The, we can put a label on this, and yes, I'm about to do. If you like, you put a label on it. Should have put a label on it. Okay, and this tells us we're observing at zero, zero, which is fine. Um, we can actually observe, if we do, um, we can observe at noon, local time 12, which is just a very fancy way of saying we can observe where, uh, where the sun is shining. So now our central point is uh, zero, still zero, zero, but the, the um, well that's kind of weird. Oh, right, because the sun is in the same direction. But our longitude now is 157.7. So what it's saying here is that our the the the, set, the terminator is now 90 degrees away from 157.7. Which, if you look at this answer, or you totally don't do that, um, so we would expect the terminator to be let's say at 157 minus 90, which would be 67.7 roughly for longitude. But we're getting minus 67.7. That is the issue here. We're getting a negative sign where we don't expect one. The other one would be at, um, actually, let me cheat even more. Um, so actually, let me, in this case, go to a different window, because that's what we have them here for. OK, and now we're going to say local time. We say local time 6. We can actually see where the Terminator is. Uh, it's, that's one of the Terminators. There's two of them. Um, the other side of the Terminator is on the flip side of this. So here we're saying that the um, observer that we're centering here at 248, uh, which is uh, whatever 248 minus 360 is. I can't do math. Minus 100 and, um, okay, minus 340 is minus 100, minus 112. Uh, yay, I just did some math in my head. Okay. So this thing launch needs to be minus 112. Obviously, that's not here. But if you look at it over here, we do have a plus 112. Uh, we do have a plus 112 longitude. So it looks like we're getting the right values, except for 
the longitude is negative, and I don't know if the latitude is correct or not. It is Pomodoro time this time. I am this time I am taking it back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Let's see if anyone is trying to chat with us. No, of course not. Okay. So again, we look like we're having a sort of a a negative. We're in the negative of where we need to be. Um, I don't understand why. And we could actually do the same thing if we flipped it and looked at the uh, we could do it at the same time even uh, at local time 18 6 p.m which is the, uh, the the flip side of the Terminator. I think we look at both of them at the same time, yay! And we probably are wasting a lot of CPU here. And here you can see the 68.7, which you saw the negative 68.7. So according to X-Planet, um, we're backwards. Now the other really good program to test with would of course be Stellarium. And let's see what Stellarium tells us. So this, if it, Stellarium disagrees with X planet, I will be a little bit more confident that I am correct. And yes, that is a very strange thing to say. And it runs, uh, nope, not here. I don't know why. I really don't understand this. The CD, by the way, is because we remount it and that does weird things unless you sort of, uh, here we go. Now I think ever since I added uh, Spice, it takes longer to um, load in because um, it doesn't it doesn't load in the whole BSP file, but it has to reference it. So this is oh shiny! I changed my colors too. So let's go to let's all take a voyage to Mars. And so if this this actually does, uh, if we're validated by Stellarium, I can actually say, unfortunately, this doesn't show the Terminator from Mars, which is, which is actually okay. Um, yeah. Hang on one second while I mix. Oh, I can do these changes at the same time. Cool. That is not what I wanted. That is freaking weird. Okay, hang on. Maybe it's because I'm trying to put windows on top of each other. Um, okay, stand by here. We're going to go ahead and um, just briefly try to figure out what the hell this is. Oh, there we go. And we will find our friend Mr. Sun. Hello, Mr. Sun. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the... Uh, the terminator line, which is where we, uh, where it intersects the equator, which is of course where the sun um, is setting or rising. So let's go ahead and find the west terminator first. Nope, 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 wrong. It's the other way. And by the way, I think you can guarantee that the west and 
one has to be in the west and one has to be on the right. On the equator at least, but I could be wrong about that, so don't quote me. Okay, so we're seeing that, roughly speaking, we're saying minus 69 degrees. Um, and my program is saying nothing. Oh no, it is. Okay. Minus 68.9, minus 69 degrees. Um, okay, so that's consistent with, um, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. That's consistent with what my program is saying. Uh, now let's find the east terminator on the equator, which is, no, I want to go this way. I want to see the sun rise and then set again. So we probably do need to mention something to the exoplanet people, unless this is a known issue. Uh, and again, when I say we should, I mean we're not going to. Um, ah, we're spinning round and round. That's because the sun is so high in the sky, we went from being rising in the, I think it still rises in the east on Mars, because Mars has the same rotational direction. But here we go with the other, yeah, we should probably have printed this as evidence that my program is correct. And, oh, too far, come back. I am doing a little bit of the funny voices. Um, so, um, and then, so yeah, and then there's my, there's my uh, validation. Um, and so according to this, if you were at 69.8 east, you would see a, uh, you would see a, unless these numbers are, unless they've done a flip for Mars because, you know, m telescope mirrors will sometimes reverse things. Uh, but if they have, they're freaking morons and someone should kill them. And yes, I do, I do abdicate violence against them. Abdicate? A educate. Uh, I, something. I Pro-violence for them. Okay. So my results do agree with Stellarium. Um... That is something we will probably mention. Okay. Um, so now there's a lot of things we could be doing from here. Um, but I think we probably want to go back to the, uh, to the API. Uh, because now that we know that our, our data is correct, we kind of want to push this into an API. Oh, actually, just to be obnoxious, let's take a brief break and see how much... Um, I don't know how much... It's more the question of data than actually trying to do anything with the... The virus I don't give a rat's ass about. Infect everyone, kill the whole world, uh, or better still, kill everybody but me, and I will continue to, well, okay, I guess kill everybody and me and whatever people are required to maintain the infrastructure for me to stream, uh, which I guess is a lot of people, but they, they get to stay. But I don't really care. That's not the reason I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this because um, I'm just curious to see how much data they have. They, they do have quite a bit, by the way. They... Uh, they have been making a real effort to keep on top of it because they believe incorrectly. What the fuck? Alrighty, but this is gonna work. Well, fuck you. Did I change it? Please stand by, motherfuckers. No, not you. Uh, the people at Mathematica, unless my trial ran out or something. Um. Okay, well, here we go again. Okay, let's see if that's the same one. Oh, why did I change it? I don't know. Some reason, obviously. Okay, let's create a new notebook for this. And now, get rid of Mr. Wolfie Man. And now, I don't actually, there's some, there's really clever ways to do stuff here that I don't know how to do. There's a way to like query and say, you know, what does Wolfram know about? Um, I'm almost sure this is not going to work. You know, what are, what begins with CO? Because th they're not going to list the data quite this way. Yeah. It's not what I expected. I mean, that is what I expected, which is to say nothing. So, also let's move this a little bit like this. And then let's get rid of this. Delete. Okay. Um... 
Wolfram Cloud COVID data should be more than enough to find it. They have not they have a dashboard. That is how freaking cool they are. Um Wolfram here uses Wolfram data repository, which we should probably look at. No. Open a new window. Okay. So I guess I want to see how they're so da, 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 da. shiny. Now let's see public resource. My God. <laughs> Just, like, even without looking for it, everyone's going there. Um, wow, and they even have the genetic sequences for this, which is pretty cool. I can't do anything with them. I have no idea how to do anything with them, but... Um, let's see. Uh, epidemic data... I think this is what I want the hell? Open a new window. Um, made computable yesterday, so I guess we're... Yeah, so this is the kind of crap that we... Um, this is the kind of crap... That we need. But there's a hell of a lot of information here. Um... And again, this Wolfram should know better. This is very misleading because, of course, the United States has more people than other countries and therefore will unquestionably have more cases. Okay. Ooh, shiny. And by the way, this is they've done a little cool thing where they pretend that they're they're tilting the world. I don't know if that's even a, an orthographic projection. And again, this is a lot of really bad visualizations on this page. Um, I mean, some of these might be good, but the ones we've looked at, really not great. Um, so now, the big pain in the ass is I cannot do this um, from the command line. Um, because there, this is all web stuff. And, and we did try earlier to do it with the command line, and we failed miserably. Um... So what I'm looking for, maybe, is the number of cases in New Mexico, day by day. Motherfucker. Let's look at an example notebook. The problem is there's too much data here is, is the issue. Do I want to? Let's open in cloud. Okay, see, this is not useful. How the hell is I going to get that? That's a piece of crap. Let's go back. All right, let's go ahead and use their resource object. From here, we should be able to get anything we need. What? That's what? Cut and paste. Let's go over to my little, my little notebook here. My little notebook and friends. Okay, and this will give me blah. If I click on it, what does it tell me? God damn it. Maybe this will do something. Oh, here we go. Estimated cases, time series, uh, keywords, documentation. Um, 2.58 megabytes isn't that big. But all right, let's take a look. Fucking hell. Um... Um, Jesus Christ. I mean, the problem here is, how do I even know what the next step is here? I mean, we could, we could say, you know, X equals uh, this, which is good. And then we'll have a return here. Why does it become input 3? This is not cool. Um, you shouldn't recalculate it every time. And now the question is, what the frick can I do with X? I mean... Show me the way, Wolfram. Um, okay. And 
they don't save it as an object, which is just bad for themselves. Um... These are, in a way, this is really bad because this is, um, they're, I mean, they're doing cool stuff here, but, but they're not really, oh, hang on. I was wondering about that. Um, they're not really letting people work with raw numbers. They're trying to show how cool they can be, but they're not showing like actual, you know, good mathematicians like me, ha ha ha, um, how to work with this data, uh, you know, how to work with the, the fine grained data. And let's see what this is. Okay. Oh, that's not too bad. See, this is the kind of data we want. Um, uh, Geoposition, confirm, can recovered. And that's very, very nice. That's actually... Oh. Yeah. See, that's... This is much, much better. Um... So let's see if we can load the, oh, I cannot upload data here, can I? Uh, let's see if we can just grab it directly from here. Um, so really, resource, this is, they've actually managed to make it worse somehow. I doubt this will work. Um... Is it load data? This is really so bad, I'm, I'm considering not using it. And I guess I can look at my old... Um, usually what I do in REPL is I look at my old notebooks to see how, how things are going. So let's maybe do that in Wolfram. I don't think it's going to help, though. I think the problem is... Um, that I keep... I don't really use my... Um, notebooks correctly. So I don't really have um, I don't really have everything the way I need it. I don't have copies of my old, here we go, my files. Um, good stuff here that I have no idea where the, what the hell it means. Um, number, Jupyter data, yeah. So okay. So I do have the files. That's that's kind of cool. I, I just have no idea what the freak they do. Can I mass download them? Nope. That just makes them look different. I can download them one at a time. But the question is, can I mass download? Oh, hang on. Can I do this? Duplicate, favorite, move, delete details. Not helpful. So go and download them, I can grep through them, uh, unless they really fuck things up. Which they might have. Alright, so let's go by date modified. Wow, have I really not been touching this since then? Um, I don't mean to check it, I want let's let's open the sucker. Oh. So I can do this, but that's not what I'm looking for here. Actually, I guess we could we could be a little bit nicer here, and we just look for the um, look for the right function. Load data. It might be import data or something. Oh, I think it might be import. Let's see what import does. There we go. Not too shabby. Import this piece of shit. Not that I'm getting angry. In CSV form. Um, and I will even assign it something. Call it T319. So what that does. It might not be able to import a URO. That's a really weird error. Um, well let's just try doing an import and just let it figure out what the hell's going on. Interesting. You know, maybe I should do a... Let me make a note of this, actually. On the other machine, 
Uh, I do a little tutorial on Wolfgram Cloud. Cause what I'm doing now, it seems like every time I do something, I create a new cell, which I'm pretty sure is incorrect. So, um, okay. All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we're almost back. Yes, I get winded walking. I am that, I suck that bad. Okay, and we're back. So let's see how big this, okay, okay, so it is, it is data. Seems to be not as much data as I would expect. Let me take a look at this version here. Nope, it is that, it is that big. I mean, there's a lot of crap in each line of data, so it's not, terrible but um let's see so let's look at one piece of data even though that's going to be like really really huge that's going to be a ton of data here okay so this is germany um and let's try to get The, the number of, oh, actually, we need to find the number of deaths, don't we? All right. Now we're going to cheat by the number one is going to be the, oh, geez, Jesus Christ. Um, the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, six. Well, let's do eight six. It's gonna be the number. It's gonna be the death count for whatever we're looking at. Okay, good. Um, so eight six, and then I'm pretty sure it's going to be two. Nope, didn't like that. Whoa. That's weird. So it's 8-6. Let's go to that. Oh, this is temporal data, so I need to actually get... So it's head is temporal data. I still... Uh, I'm really trying to get, like, the arguments of this thing. But let this might be like a, a th an object that you can't dig into any further. Oh yeah. So we, we kind of need to untie we need to unwind it. This is icky. Um because all I'm looking for is is this here. Um these numbers here that show the the rising death rate. Um so I guess <sighs> What's the opposite of head? Head will give me this. Um, and it's not tail. It would be nice if it were. I think you can do arguments. And I say that as though I, I know what I'm talking about. And I cannot. I don't even know what arguments does. Okay, so now what do we do here is it's clear that um, even though Wolfram thinks it's giving us data in a useful format. 
it's really hard to find the data you want. So now we need to find, yes, an other source of data, um, which there should be billions of them. I'm trying to find one that's somewhat useful. Um, and ideally one from a government, let's see. Um, and this is the, uh, this is the, uh, numbers close out at 4 p.m. the day of reporting, which is about 35 minutes from now. Okay. Yes, these are very nice. Where can I download them, please? Okay. Download. And I could put site... Uh, you know what? I'll put site.gov here. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Cool. Now, it, this is absolutely what I kind of didn't want. Um, because this does give me all the gov sites, but that's any government entity in the United States. This database is okay. This this is looking good. That is not looking good. Um, that's a database of articles. That's not what I want. I want really. We will even allow the CDC to be part of it. Provisional death counts. Uh, current, that's... Is that what I want? Maybe. That might be what I want. Um, go fuck yourself. And let's put the word download. Hey! I don't even care what it is at this point. I just want to get some freaking data. Provisional... Not crazy about that. Um, nope, these are these are not individual data. These are grouping data. Um, download COVID data. Maybe I'm being too specific. Hospitalizations. Graphics and images. Now there is the site called World Meters. I don't think they want you downloading um, their data though. But let's find out, because I'm getting sick of not doing it. Okay. Um, most people are being very nice about letting you download data. Oh, so this is why I don't see these ads on my other machine. Um, okay, and I'm, I'm pretty more, okay, let's see if the word download is in here. No. I don't know, maybe? What does that do? Um, that probably just gives me a freaking ad, doesn't it? Um, so, I could go into a deeper page, but I mean, if they're not going to let me download from this page... Um... By the way, I like the way they, they, they say it's up like up to the second. Up to right now, this is this is right now is 1928. That's how many we know of. Obviously, people don't get confirmed instantly. Okay, so why is this so hard? Download coronavirus data. Seems like a very useful thing to be doing. Well, okay, this is not the government, but it maybe will work, unlike our government. In general, does not work? Okay. Um, okay, so this is good, 10,000. Um, okay, this is... Um, this is all great if you could just tell me where the freaking data is. I love it. This is... This is one problem the government has a lot of. Is th there's a lot of places where they tell you how wonderful the data is, but it's not clear. But in this case, it probably is. Um, oh. Um. 
Okay. Well, this is good, actually, if we can get this, because we can continuously pull that. The problem is, is that, is this literally where the data is, or is that just a copy of the data? You motherfuckers. All right, let's go ahead and git clone this. Who knows, maybe this is what we need. I'm telling you, this COVID virus is <laughs> killing me. Barumpa. Okay. Baby needs some freaking data. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, into COVID. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, this seems like kind of what I want. Uh, okay, let's see what we have here. Well, the daily reports, that's not too bad. Actually, the time series might be more useful. But oh, okay, this is actually not bad at all. Um, okay. Now, the real, the only thing that matters, of course, is is New Mexico in here, and it might not. Oh, it is nice. Oh. So is this death by death? Well, I mean, there aren't that many deaths, so it could easily be death by death. 51,291 uh, lines. But there's more deaths than that now. I mean, again, we don't have we don't have them all, but that's, that's actually okay. This, this could be death by death, uh, which isn't bad. Um, and so, wait, wait, where are we? Let's look at time series. Maybe that's what I need. And then again, it's also possible I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, so please. Oh, here we are. Time series, this is confirmed. This is maybe what I want. Province, state, country, lat, lawn, and then a whole bunch of numbers that represent the, uh, the, actual, the actual number of deaths, which, which I could put into Mathematica pretty easily. So let's rock this roll. New Mex. New Mex. Okay. Not cool. Fuck. Why don't you have data for New Mexico? Pieces of crap. Oh, oh, hang on. Okay. Never mind. It's probably inside the one that says US. Because that's where we are. And that data is probably... Okay, now you're being too specific. Out of NM, New Mexico. What the, what the hell are you guys doing to me? Um, oh, great. So this is for every single... Th there should be one that's global for New Mexico. I mean, that's... Um, that's conglomerate for New Mexico. Is this like an exercise in giving data in the worst possible format? Oh, hang on. Either Santa Fe is getting really sick, or... All right. Let me take a look at what this actually tells us. <sighs> Why do we have such bad data here? Oh, okay, so maybe NM would be the way to go. Okay, no it's not, apparently. Wow. I mean, just wow. Bullshit Alabama. I mean, I guess this is technically the right way to do it, but I mean... It would be nice to have data that people actually wanted. 
Let's see what this is. All countries with only state but Australia. I mean, I guess if you wanted to be Okay. So terrible data here. Um bad data. Okay, well, that's that's how we have it, and I'm not ready to tackle it in that form. Maybe archive data will help. Something tells me it won't. Okay, so what I was trying to do is get a data series and show, um, and and basically see could we could we make a prediction that was like five days old, pretend it was five days ago, and see how well that prediction holds up today. Uh, and apparently, the answer to that question is. Not easily, because we're, no one's giving us good fucking data. Um, or at least easy to read data. The, what the weird thing is, maybe it's not that weird after all, um, is the worldometers. La 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 la. Why don't I ever do anything correctly? These guys are doing a great job with uh, giving us. Ooh. This is the kind of. A, Ultraviolet rays uh, do prevent viruses from reproducing correctly, uh, but the amount you'd need for COVID, I think, is really, really high. So these guys are beautiful. Well, actually, we might be able to suck some data out of them. Um, okay, so we don't have historical data for New Mexico. Oh, we have a source. Yay. Ooh. Um, this is our, these are our orders. Um, okay, interesting, we do have test results here too. Um, all right. Okay. Interesting. Um, um, Jesus Christ. Lots of things are considered essential. Um, Um, okay. Uh, this is, by the way, one of the more interesting things here. Um, there's an exemption to the five or more rule for churches, synagogues, mosques, or other places of worship. Why? Does God going to protect them better? Um, okay. Interestingly, it does look like... Um, See. Um. Okay. Uh, let's see. And it's good to know that you still get pot here, medical pot only, but still. Um. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I think we would let's see, okay. Jesus Christ. And this number has increased a lot since then. But that's not really gonna help me with the day to day values here. Um which they might not have, but they have pretty good pretty good non day to day values. Um so I guess we and I, I'm not even that interested in this data, which is why I'm kind of uh Kind of like, eh. uh, if it had been an easy to read format that we could get a list from New Mexico, or actually I think even for the United States would be kind of nice. So maybe we can get it for the United States. Uh, Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
we are almost back. And we are back. Okay. Been going for about an hour and about an hour. Um and I think I'm gonna go for maybe another half hour. Um so let's see. And I think ah eh, shit, let's take one more look. Um I keep thinking it's the word case, but it's CSSE, which is a organization of some sort. No, I think we want time series. And I think we want, oddly enough, we want global, and then we want to just suck out the US part of it. Which is what we want to do in many, oh, there's a space there. Okay. United States, is that how we're called? Oh, great. They break out territories. That might be acceptable. Apparently, we don't, we don't get to be in this. USA, US. There we are. Okay. Okay, and I think that is the correct sequence for the US. I have no idea what I'm going to do with that, though. That's... That's some information that I um, have, now that I think about it. It's not particularly useful to me. Um, I mean, I guess we could try to fit an exponential curve through this. But the whole point I'm making is uh, you can't really do that. Um... Uh, I mean, you can, but it's not going to be predictive, and if you do it for, like, different, go back in time and do it for different days, my claim is you'll get different exponential models, which show that this is not really growing exponentially. So now that I've gone to all the trouble of finding the data, we're going to follow the standard procedure of ignoring it. So instead, we're going to go back to our API. Um, and let's see. And we're going to... Okay. And so basically the only thing we need to do here is start printing the results we need to set the output. Um, and the one thing I do want to do before I forget is to let them know that the order in which we're going to get the data is long lat. So that should be good. Let's go ahead and... I don't know why. This looks really ugly to me, but at some point... Uh, I mean, it has to be a little bit ugly, I guess. All right. Um, all right. Let's just see what we're doing here. That is clearly not what we're doing here. Okay. Um, so that's the output. Cool, cool, cool. I sound like Ovid. Um... So I guess what we want to do here is we, we're going to need to build up an array of points. Um, if we're really clever, and this might be excessively clever, we don't. We can actually put them directly into output without having to um, without having to build a separate array. That is like insanely bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's insanely complicated programming. Um, But I don't even know why I do stuff like that. I guess it's just to show how I'm to impress people who aren't don't even exist. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the um, the the output. And um, okay, so this is the the the, the almost all of the cases are going to be like this: long something and lat something. And this is a special case we can we can deal with. Um, uh, we can basically, for this case, I think we can just basically create an other hash uh, called output input. That'll be fun. Um, anyway, let's just do this. This is the case I want to sort of look at, though. Um, longitude plus D plus equals, um, I 
think I actually don't care as long as it's not the ampersand. So dot star question mark ampersand lat and this is the array name equals dot star question mark and I think that's the end of the um oh and then another ampersand. This is actually good. Um And here we just want to make sure we, we're capturing this correctly, step at a time. Don't need to print that anymore. And now let's debug this sucker. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, that's good. That works. Okay. Um, so now we want to do. And this is the part that's going to make you weep. Output points. Treat it as an array. Um, now, the, the values of 1 and 3 should match because it's the same thing. Dollar sign 1. Um, the 0th element needs to be the. This is insane needs to be this and the um oh actually hang on I can do this a little bit better. So that array element needs to be itself an array. Um this by the way will give us a reference to the array which is what we really actually want. This. We ignore value three because we, we know that it's gonna be the same as we could test but we know it's going to be the same as um, value uh, one. I'm I'm too, let's see if this even compile. Holy crap! Motherfucker! Well, that worked. That that worked better than I thought it would. In fact, it worked almost too well. But no, it worked exactly well enough. Okay. Wait. Oh, because I set the debug flag, it got set as an input, which is fine. Uh, output order, lat long, points. I mean, the only kind of ugliness is what we have quotes around them, um, which I'm not actually, Jesus Christ, this should not work. This is so ugly, it makes me weep. I mean, at the very least, I could pull these things out into, uh, into variable names. However, since it does work almost, I'm going to go ahead and bcgitify it. Or do I need to, this is bcgit, yeah. Okay. All right, away it goes. And now the only thing left to do is the line that isn't the one line that's not going to be that, uh, which is actually going to be the, um, um, which is going to be the 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 line that tells you about the other bullshit. Okay. Um. So else. Um. Output. Okay, what are we going to call this? We can call it um, data. This is just, this is ugly. Stir to hash of the line. Um, honestly, I'm not sure that's going to work. Although, <laughs> it's still pretty damn awesome. Uh, output order points data 4 over 8. Okay, that did not work. Uh, because this is, I'm referring to this hash there, let's fuck this up even more. Ooh, nice. Okay, 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 okay. Um. Okay, so this returns a hash. I think I did this up here actually. Um, I had to do something weird with. Uh, yeah, I think because I'm calling a function, I've got to do it this way. Take the result and then convert it to a hash. God damn it. I did this, I literally did this one second ago, meaning yesterday. Uh, let's see how I did this. How clever am I? Backslash. 
slash result output. Okay, let's go all the way back here. La 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 la. Okay, my output result input equal backslash. Um. Okay, so this is a. This won't work. Let's confirm that. Uh, right, because it's it's gonna be treated as a. Um, it's gonna be treated as a, a literal. This may work. Uh, nope, still not quite there. Start a hash dollar sign i, which returns a hash ref. This should be. Okay. And this is getting to the point of insane ugliness. Alpha. Oh, okay, so alpha has is a, is a um, uh, alpha is a. So this is a pure hash. So this should be a hash ref. No, it's a list of scalars. Okay, so can I promote this to a hash? Like doing this? No, it doesn't like it. Okay. All right, straight hash I. This should not work at all. I mean, it will because I just said it won't. But this should be freaky. Yeah. Um. So start a hash is a hash. What happens if I do this? I get the feeling that's not going to do what I want. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So we basically have to do this. That's how ugly that is. Okay, so there we are. Data N twenty name Earth type umbral frame I T R F I T is this. Okay, so this is a um, uh, this is an API that will return. I think I think what's we're done actually. Um, we can't be done, can we? That might be it. That might be the whole thing. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and push this to. Uh, let me make sure that I didn't break anything by erasing one extra. Okay. There we are. Yep. That's in JSON format. All right. Now the question is, question as uh, Howard would say, if you were parroting Sheldon. Um, do I want to put new lines in it? Do I want to make this XML? -y? Um, I guess I really can't do any of that stuff because I'm using a function to convert to JSON. And I don't really have control over that function. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, okay, let me go ahead and push this before I forget. Okay, all nice and pushed. Uh, sorry, it's been pushed to git. I need to push it to the server, obviously, next, which I can do. Um, and then we can figure out what the guy was asking. And we'll, we'll give him a sort of a nicer uh, format for his answer, um, you know, for his specific question, and then mention the API as a sort of an afterthought. All right, let me go ahead and push this over to the... Um, I'll push this over to um, the uh, DigitalOcean machine, which should not really take long. Last time, for some reason, it took forever, and then I did it once again between streams, and it was fine. 
So it really, really shouldn't take forever. Um, it's once again taking forever. I, I don't really understand why. I have not changed that much. It might be because I've got all these other things open, but still. Okay. And then let's go back to our client API and have that uh, visitate that. Um, because that was fun. And I actually do need to download the client API as well before I forget. I mean, it's GitHub saved somewhere, but God only knows where. And maybe even God doesn't know. So let's see. Let me go ahead and... Okay. The script here should be connecting to... So now we should be able to connect... Well, let's do it. This will just give us something pretty boring. Wait. There it is. The current time in... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So that is actually... The new version of the API should not do that. It should tell you that this time zone doesn't exist. So I'm hoping by the time I finish this... Okay, there we go. I finished it, and I think there's a different problem now uh, that we can also deal with. Um, let me run it to make sure it's still broken. Okay, it is. Um, I think this BC API is a different one, but we're going to fix that. And when you ask, how are we going to fix that? I don't know. Um... How do I get these to be white? I did. Oh, I know how it is. It's X term. Yeah. And then I forget how we get the name to be DigitalOcean. Maybe maybe you can't do that. All right. So once again, you can see my IP address. So please take note. Oh, actually, you won't because I fixed that. Okay. So the problem now is I think. Yeah, uh, of course, I also have my, um, I very cleverly have my root set to something totally stupid. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe I can do something a little bit brighter with that. Site's old. Let me link my, and then let's see what, um, let's look at my uh, nginx conf, which I don't, I mean, I could do it also from, from locally because I know where that is. Um, okay, here we go. So we'll go to root. By the way, the, the use of slash sites to put your sites on it is to where you put your sites. That comes from a Cobalt machine that uh, at one point Sun was, I think, uh, I think it was Sun, uh, was advertising as a web server. Uh, and I got a uh, remote Cobalt server to run my websites on. And that's how I remember sites. It's not standard. I don't think it was standard. It was standard for Cobalt, but I don't think that ever really caught on for anyone else. So now what I can do is be a little bit more clever here and say, this will be sites. So now when I do this, it at least takes me to where it's supposed to take me. Um, okay. So now... Oh, remove, just get rid of the freaking... Yes, remove that file. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a sim link, which should... I'm almost certain NGINX is going to complain, because if you want to use sim links in your web root, you normally have to do something special. You at least have to tell the web server that you're doing it. No. Oh, cool. And the other thing I need to do, of course, is to update. <laughs> I think git pull will do it. I have to update this from the GitHub. I'm not. Whoa. That's not cool. Okay, I should not have. Am I just skipping a um? All right. Let's take a look at that. Um, You should commit your changes or stash them. I don't actually know what stashing is. Um, so it looks like the only difference here, by the way, is um, um, I have stuff in comments. Mm. Okay, I'm, I I is confused. I should not have that. Should not. Be. Can I do a git clone? Nope. 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 Um. So really, this should be a way of saying this is read only. But and let's. I don't know what the hell stash does, but probably can't hurt anything. Cause I, I can always. Um, oh. Git stash. Well, let's see what git stash does. Um, oh. Just git stash. Ah. Shouldn't need to do that. I mean, it, git pull doesn't require it. I wonder if I can do this. This is probably a really bad idea. Uh, your local changes to please commit your changes or stash them before you can merge. Um, no. I could remove the file, but I get the feeling that's, well, you know what? That might be enough to do it. It might recognize that removing a file is enough to not break it. There we go. Um, okay. So now, sorry, we, are we running screen here? I don't think we are. There's my IP address again, by the way, if you need it. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to run screen here. All right, so now we can go to sites, yay, API. And now we can do link minus s uh, root bc. This is going to break. This is It's not going to allow me to do this. I mean, if it does, I'll be very surprised. Uh, the symbolic link is fine. But now if I actually try to use it, um, it's going to complain like crazy. That's very surprising. Okay, I'm not going to complain about it working. 
Let's see if it works in the insecure way, too. Okay, I guess symbolic links don't bother it. That is really cool. Now, where the hell was I with the other testing? Okay, that was testing this, that was testing this, that was, where the hell? Someplace I think I was doing a, um, um, BC API, not that, not that, I was doing it with time. Uh, minus F equals, I know what you're thinking, it's going to take you more time to find it, nope. Um, then it would be just recreate it, and again, I'm aware of that. Oh, is it minus minus? Okay, sorry. So what I'm looking for is minus minus F equals time. Not here. Screen one. Minus minus F. Nope. Is it over here? Nope. Is it over here? Probably not. Is it over here? Okay. So wherever the hell I was testing it from... I probably need to find that. It's probably not good that I don't remember where that is. Um, so I should be able to exit from here. But here I wouldn't be testing anything because... Okay, so let's, this is again not going to be helpful. Let's take a look at my history. Oh, good. That literally here has... Okay. Oh, here we are. Um... Let's just do this. Ooh. Oh, right, because do I still have a query string? I hope not. Okay. God damn, that's good. Oh, I'm sorry. I was doing it from the REPL, wasn't I? That's where, that's where we were. So I'm losing my freaking mind. Yay! So now we can make this time zone. Oh, I don't know. What's a good time zone? Singapore. Always like the people in Singapore. Clearly, you know, they don't like me because they're going to break my freaking API. Wow. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is Replit being nasty, not... Yeah. By the way, Singapore's time zone is known as plus zero eight. Okay, so let me stop this. Let me run it again. Just, just wow. <laughs> Um, asked why this doesn't work. Um, okay, I'm not really too worried about that. Um, uh, res JSON then T2, T2, console log T2, res output. Um, which be, uh, eventually this is what we want. And I'm pretty sure res output is something we could... Um, oh yeah, we did already, because res is actually the whole thing that comes back. Okay, seriously? I'm going to try doing a reload here. I'm not leaving the page, but I kind of am leaving the page. All right. Uh, Replit actually is a pretty nice service for free, but it does have some issues. Like, for example, this. Uh, it's not going to load. There we go. Now we'll probably even get a good answer. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't manage, it does, didn't bother to keep our changes because somehow I lost contact with it. We're still going to go to Singapore. It's a good country. And actually, you know what? I met Indonesia. I don't know how the hell I... I don't know if there is a time zone called Indonesia. I don't think there is, actually. Yeah. There might be one called Asia slash Indonesia. Ah, screw it. Who cares? Um, okay. 
So it looks like we do have an API that's working. It does two functions, one of which is stupid, and the other of which is stupid but in a different way. So now let's go back to the uh, Stack Exchange question and see what his actual parameters were. Um, um, because he had a very specific question. So let's go back over here. And I'm going to go ahead and say close tabs to the right. I'm, I'm brave. I forget if it was in space or in... Um, why? Oh, cool. I remember my password. Okay, so now we're in good shape. So now I should be able to go to my network profile, look at my favorites. Yeah, I've earned a new privilege. I don't give a rat's ass, actually. By the way, their system of privileging sucks. It's so bad that they have to defend the system over reality, which you kind of suck with. How did I get a seven points on that? Anyway. Um, favorites. Why is there... Oh, cool. So someone has updated other stuff. That should be a forward slash, but that's not me, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Uh, newest activity? Newest, I think, is when I added them. Um, okay. What the hell? Why are people deleting stuff? <sighs> why? Oh, why? That actually get... That'd be cool if it got deleted just after I solved it. Um, okay. Terminator. That's way too... Um, sorry, that's way too... <laughs> um... I should go for the whole site. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's on space, but... I want to go to the... Take me. Take me to the, your leader. Terminator. Uh, order by... Pretty sure you can't do that. Um, so I have this on my favorites. I don't know, maybe it's 11 days old. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, cool. All right. Um, okay, so let's rock and roll this. Um, so the question is, when is this exactly in Unix time? Which, fortunately, I think we can just do this. Okay, and I mean, obviously that's, that's not helpful, but now we can do this and get this Unix time out of it. Um, I'm not going to make the uh, the standard of uh, the point that this is actually, uh, because we, Unix time doesn't include leap seconds, this doesn't either. But that's okay, because my program, when it changes Unix time to ET, ephemeris time, it does compensate for leap seconds. So, the question of the moment would be something. And actually, let's see how we would do this on X Planet. X Planet. Um, well, I mean, I'll mention, to, I'll mention X Planet, but I mean, it's not going to do the right thing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And at some point, I actually need to create a readme for this question specifically. Uh, so now, let's just go over here and do it. Um, F equals terminator, and I equals 499, and we won't change the number of points for right now. Um, uh, we'll just leave it at 100. Uh, which probably won't be enough, but let's see what happens. Okay. Didn't like that. All right. What the hell? Let me run it from here then. That was that went pretty badly.
Okay, so this is this is the run directly from um, without the API. So it's gonna be minus i minus t. This might not work because we need, okay it did work. All right, let's try it from the API. Uh, I do have an f in there, right? I do have f equals terminator. Yeah, I do. Minus minus f equals terminator. Minus minus i equals oh wait. Wait, 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 wait. Is it I? I mean, it'd be really nice if this would actually document itself and tell me what I want, but let's see. You gotta tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Um, so that's something to do. Okay, no, it is I. It, I is fine. Um, hang on one second here. Move some stuff around. Oh, sorry, main machine problems. And then minus minus t equals this, and we should have magic occur. Interesting. So it does work like this. Doesn't work like this. I mean, obviously, we, we, can, we can now go even more specific. F equals, what am I doing wrong here? All right, let's do this. Again, we're testing locally, so we're still not quite in the full zone there. Uh, oh, I guess we could just visit this, couldn't we? I sometimes do things too hard. Ooh, it didn't like that. So why didn't it like that? So let's do this here. Uh, if it runs here, we need to see whether it runs over on the other side, uh, which should have the exact same version. So still working. So now we have to worry about, actually, what do we have to worry about? Is it that I'm not, I mean, that should not be, yeah, that should not be an issue. Okay. So now we must go back over, I don't know why I even bothered to close the machine, close the X term, because we will now go back to Mr. DigitalOcean. And uh, I keep forgetting, the name of the machine is TerraMap Adventure. It happens to be hosted on... Uh, DigitalOcean. Okay. I'm tempted to go to the logs to see what the hell went wrong. Um. Um. Okay. All right. Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so for some reason, this is not working. Now, the first thing is that maybe it's not working at all. So 
So let's see if that's the case. Okay, so that's okay. Then let's try it with these. I get the feeling there might be an issue in terms of pathing. It might not be able to get the, the kernels that it needs. But let's just do this. Ooh, that's not what I meant to do. No. So that. Um, normally I would go to Tisha, but you can also just do this. Although that might be a problem, actually. Ooh, hang on. Uh, you are supposed to read from the environment variable. Yeah, okay. Okay, badness is occurring. So what if I run it from over here? This is this is gonna if this works, okay good. At least it's consistent in not working. Is this is an environment variable? I'm missing something. I, I just, and it's probably minor. Uh, I equals this and T equals this. I mean, is it the value of, but I mean, that couldn't be it. Terminator. All right, what if I give it, don't give it I equals 499. Let's just see. Let's just break it until it fixes itself. Okay, no, that didn't like, didn't care for that. Okay, let's do this. Okay. And let's do this then. Okay, totally broken. Totally broken, and we don't know why. All right, so some, 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 well, something is wrong. That's not a very deep statement, though. Okay, so something's wrong here. Let's see what it is. Let's. Okay, so that still doesn't do that. Um, the only thing I can think of is I'm not in T shell, but if this thing doesn't work in Bash, there's something like really wrong. Oh, that isn't how you set the environment variable in. Is it put in? That's weird. Okay, well. I'm very, very close to... Um, that should get rid of it. No? I think it's unset, maybe. I have no idea if that worked. Is it set env? No. And I realize I'm chasing down the wrong problem. I also realize that I should probably be printing the output of standard error of the as because I do I do capture that. I just don't put it anywhere. Um, uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea to, to announce that though, so I'm not sure I want to add that. But let's see. Um, Okay. Oh, shiny. Oh. So it has to be... Instead of doing this, which used to work, by the way, I'm pretty sure. Um, that didn't work. Env... Ignore and unset. Um, oh, that actually only runs a program in a modified environment. <sighs> How do I set environment variables? 
I mean, uh, they show up the same as, you know, they show up the same as variables I'd use set using set. Set env isn't a thing. Let's look at the set. So I can set all sorts of crap, but I can't set environment variables. Okay. Wasted way too much time on this. We're going to T-shell. T-shell is magic. Um... Where am I here? Let me get to... Now, this should... This may just work magically. No. Um, here, I know I can do this. Um, if, if it's the fact that the thing is running in... Uh, the server's running in bash, that's going to be insanely bad. Ooh. Okay. So now it's failing correctly. Um, okay. Well. Uh, okay, now let's see. I should be calling home... Aha. I should be calling home user bin. I might not have a, I might not have a user on, on this machine. And that is a change that I made um, recently to give the full path. So this is kind of cool. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Wait. Oh. I don't know why it just sort of... Is there a timeout here? Um, okay. Uh, I shouldn't have a timeout set, but maybe I do. All right, so this time we're not even going to go into T-Shell. I, I realize I'm not doing that. Um, oh, we need to see if there is a home user bin. There is. Is there a VC Terminator in there? There is. Do I need to remake VC Terminator? I don't know. Aha! And thus, we see the problem. So spice kernels... So I guess I don't have all the spice kernels here, although... All the Spice Girls, either. I don't have the Spice Girls, and I don't have the Spice Kernels. It sucks. I could have sworn I fixed this problem, though. Um, all right. Clearly, I did not fix this problem. Did my R-Sync somehow break this? Maybe that's the issue. When I R-synced last time, it might have broken this, um... It might have broken a symlink or something, although it shouldn't really do that. Alright. So... I wonder if there's a kernels.old... Okay, so this is... Not Ruby. I know I have these kernels somewhere. Let's see where it is, though. Um... So it should be under C spice kernels. That's where all my good stuff is. Okay. So I'm in home user kernels. I mean it's, I mean I'm in home user spice, but so remove I think I can get away with this. Well let me just make sure that the stuff that's in kernels the one what? Oh I wish we could stop doing this. We're going to move kernels, whatever the hell this is, into Spice 64 kernels, which I don't think is, yeah, I didn't think we needed that. So I can remove kernels, blah, yep, remove dir kernels, link minus s, let's try to be a little bit nice here and not go through multiple links, kernels, dot. Okay. Now whatever the hell it is I was trying to do before... Oh, shiny. Okay. Let's see if that fixed it all the way back to REPL. OK. 
Okay, wow. It's, I mean, that looked like it was not impressive, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that if we go... Okay, come on, so what am I to do? Nice! And this is the guy's answer, basically. Um... So the Terminator is actually somewhat not straight here, which is good because otherwise it'd be pretty damn boring. Um, not bad at all. It's kind of stupid to call this data, but this is just the stuff that we're getting back from it. Okay, so pretty damn solid now. What the hell did I just do? Oh, you can get rid of that completely. Nice. I, I didn't want to do that, though. I'm back. I have so much left to give. Wait. Where do you go? Come back. We want you back. Want you back? There we are. Okay. So now we basically have the guy's answer. And we could tell him how to to, um, to verify it using Stellarium. How not to verify it using Xplanet. Um, and the fact that I set up an API so anyone can do this for anything they want. Um, and booyah. And give him a solution that, you know, we, we'll put a solution somewhere special for him. Uh, probably on DigitalOcean, I think. I think I kind of want to make that the, uh, I want to move away from BC Info 3. Because um, I've got too many freaking machines and they're costing me a ton of money that I don't have uh, unless I die from COVID very soon. Okay, thank you for watching the stream. Goodbye for now. I may or may not be back later.